The following interview was conducted with Vicki Barton for the HIA Oral History Project. It took place on November 20th, 2013 at Academy 175. The interviewer is Leanne Sager. The sound and video is recorded by Jan Shi. Hi. Hi. What was your path to the Academy? You know, I, I thought you might ask that question. And interestingly, I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I've been thinking about writing down some things. So this is a little bit of a long story, okay. but it's a very cool story. Okay. So I ended up going to a place called Marion College that's now Indiana Wesleyan. And when I was in high school, we really didn't have any guidance counselors or anybody telling us, you know, what you should do. And, and I really didn't have any plans to go to college because um, we lived on the farm and, you know, just didn't know what I was going to do. But it so happened that I played basketball and I played basketball pretty well. And my coach in high school happened to know the coach at Marion College really well. So that coach at Marion College came, looked at me, and recruited me to go play at, at Marion. So that's how I ended up getting to Marion, just by playing basketball. So I go to Marion College, I get my degree, um, and then I come back and I work at a place called White's Institute for a while. Worked there for nine years, actually working with kids. Um, it's a residential facility for kids that have been in trouble with the law and need some of the help. Did that for nine years and then decided to go on this bicycle trip. Um, so I did this bicycle trip for a year and ended up being done with that and needing to get back to school. So Ball State at the time was on quarters okay. and I finished this bicycle trip in February. Now this is all is relevant and I'm getting to my point. <laughs> finished this trip in February and so since, no I'm sorry, I finished in November, they started in February. So I come to, to Ball State to get my master's in, in counseling. And so I'm on a break from a class, and I walk down to get a drink, and my old dean of students from Marion College is standing there. And I'm like, hi, Dean Luttrell, how are you? And I'm like, oh, hi, how are you? And he asks me what I'm doing. And I tell him that I'm just finishing up my master's in counseling. He's like, we have an opening at Marion College because this woman has gone on pregnancy leave, and we need someone to fill in. Would you be interested? And I'm like, well, yeah. So. I go interview and do that for a year. While I'm there doing this year stint, I go over to a conference at Anderson University uh, where the woman says, you know what, we're looking for a director of counseling services and how would you like to, to talk to them about that? I said, oh, that would be great. So I interviewed at Anderson for that, got that job, worked there two years and it just so happened that the person that was the first director of residential life here was the Dean of Students at Anderson University. Oh. They needed a counselor here, so she came back and said, do you want to interview for this new school? I did, and that's how I got the job, and that's what led me here. So just from one person to the next person to the next person. So there's about six people in my life that led me to the Indiana Academy. Wow, that's a lot of happenstance. It is a lot of happenstance, and best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. Which aspects of your work at the Academy have had the greatest meaning for you? Oh, by far, the people, the kids that I meet. The kids, um, they're kids, they grow up, they become adults, they are amazing people. Some of the parents that I've met, um, but there is no doubt by working this job, I've had the opportunity to meet some of the most outstanding, greatest people in the world that I never would have had a chance to meet. I could have traveled the world. Mm -hmm. And still, if you take a random sample, of the people that I've gotten to meet here that are still in my life, it couldn't be any better than, than these kids. Do you have some anecdotes about <laughs> Oh my gosh. I should have written a book a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, probably the the thing that I that I like telling the most is, is about the kids that were here for the, the first year. Mm -hmm. Because this school started and, and no one was ready for school to start. I mean, we, we didn't have class schedules. We didn't have, and I want you to think about this, you know, all the forms that you have at orientation, all the forms that you have going up from the front desk, not one form existed for anything when we started this school. The kids' schedules, they all had to be handmade. Wow. And there were kids, and I'm truly not exaggerating, my office was over on um, the boys' hall, close to where the TV lounge is. Okay. 
and kids would be lined up on both sides of the hall all the way back to where Paul's office was, and we would be doing scheduling. But those kids had no idea what they were getting themselves into at all, and they, they came to do this. So they were true pioneers. Um, in those days, you could take as many classes as you wanted to take, and some kids were taking like 11 and 12. You couldn't flunk out of the school, um, and you couldn't go to your rooms between classes. Wow. So when you got up at 8, everybody had to be off the floors at 8. Okay. Couldn't go back up until 4. So the beginning of, of how it was and all the crazy things that have happened in between and all the miraculous things that have happened in between, um, the things that we've, we've celebrated, the things that we've cried about, um, it's just, it's been an, an incredible life. And, and I've never, ever been bored mm -hmm. because of, you know, the people that, that live here and work here. Okay. What do you wish you had known about the Academy before you began your work here? I, I've thought about this question. What do I wish I would have known? Um, and, and what's kind of funny about that question is mm -hmm. that there wasn't anything to know, you know? At the time that we started, we knew that it was a school for smart kids. Mm -hmm. We knew that um, they were going to live here. And we didn't have any idea what to expect. Um, and I'm trying to think if, if there was something I wish I would have known, because I was really, it was kind of terrifying to think about taking this job. Um, because there were so many unknowns. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's anything I wish I would have known. I don't think I would have done anything differently. Um, And I'm trying to think. It, it, I wish I, if I, do I wish I would have known that I'd have been here as long as I'd have been here? Probably not. Um, I guess if I had a magic wand, I would want to have known some bad things that happened to kids so I could prevent them. Mm -hmm. um, but that's it. Okay. Um, how does the social dynamic of the academy workplace compare to that of your previous workplace? I have. Um, I really had an opportunity to work in some neat places, and I tell me about those at the beginning of the story. All of those places um, were actually church-based. Um, this was the first kind of secular place that I had worked, and, and so a lot of lovely people. But also in the church-based institutions, there's a different dynamic. There are more uh, you shoulds and you shouldn'ts. There's more judgment. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are probably more criticism, um, more people telling you what you should be, shouldn't be, what you should do and shouldn't do. So the dynamic here, and we've worked really hard to make the dynamic this way, is is very diverse, hopefully very respectful, open. People have a right to think differently, be different as long as we're respectful to each other. So the social dynamic I, I love the people that I work with. I don't know how many people get to say that they love the people that they work with and, and the kids that they get to be around. Um, so by far, this has been the most enjoyable in that it's so accepting mm -hmm. um, of so many different kinds of, of beliefs and people. What are some of the measures put in place to ensure that kind of environment? Well, I think a little history. Mm -hmm. I and mean, we've been doing this for like you know, 23 years. And that's something we talk about all the time, mm -hmm. that this is a, a school that is in the middle of Indiana, and we're bringing all kinds of different people in. And this is your opportunity not to only learn what's going on in the classroom, but to learn about other people and what their lives are. Because most people only know what they've been raised in and their family. I mean, you're 15 years old when you come in and you think, this is the way every family is. This is the way every religion is. This is the way it operates. And so we try really hard to, to say to the kids, you're going to wake up here. And, and you may have been taught by your environment that this wasn't okay, or this wasn't okay, or this is the right way. And all we're asking you to do is to wake up, look around, and see that there are lots of different ways, and your way or their way, you know, no one's, who's to say it's right or wrong, as long as you're being kind and respectful. So we tell that to people of orientation, we tell that to our kids, we react if someone is being unkind or disrespectful. And sometimes it's just a teachable moment of, did you even know that saying 
that was not was not okay. So I think it's a it's a history kind of event that has led us there, but it's also a day to day, moment to moment, teachable. So if someone hears someone saying a a joke that is is disrespectful, they'll say, hey, it's you know that's not okay. Mm -hmm. If someone is using the wrong kind of language, we're going to say, hey, that's you know, think about what you're saying. And in a lot of other environments, people will hear something like that and they won't do anything about it and they'll let it go and if it go, goes once and somebody thinks it's okay. And I, and I hope, at least the people that I work with, I see them doing that on a day-to-day -day basis. It's like if you decide you're going to do an exercise regime, if you let one day go, it's easy to let the next day go and then pretty soon you're just out of shape. But if you're doing it every day, then pretty soon you've created the kind of body or, or atmosphere that you want. Okay. Um, how do you think having worked at the Academy will affect your future? Um, well, my future. And who knows how much longer my future here will be. I mean, I've been here 23 years. It, it, it affects me on a daily basis. It will affect my future in that I will always know someone that does something and does it well. Yeah. If I need a lawyer, I need a doctor, I need a historian, I need um, anything. I am truly a, a click of the computer away. Um, an example, and this is kind of a very light, funny example, but something had happened on my, my phone, and I'm not very computer literate, but I had asked everybody here, how do I fix this, how do I fix this, how do I fix this? And nobody could figure it out. Not even the store could figure out how to fix my phone. I got online and said, here's what's happening to my phone. Can anybody tell me how to fix this? Fix my phone in a heartbeat. <laughs> I mean, the resources that, that not only me, but you, have available to you the rest of your life are overwhelming. But beyond the resources, the people that have enriched my life, that will always be a part of my life, um, that will affect me for the rest of my life. And, and the other part of that is, I guess when you, you get to be my age, you start thinking about you know, what you're going to leave behind someday, is that I really hope that that I have made a difference in in somebody's life that it was a very important difference. then they will make a difference in somebody else's life and that will carry on even if it's just one thing and it's one person um, that somehow you change the the effect and the energy in the world in a positive way do you have any final comments or anything like that I think it's really great you guys are doing this well, thank you for meeting with us. Well, thank you for asking the questions. What are you What are you going to do with this when you're you have all this information from everyone? We're right now. We're creating a website. Um, every transcript that has ever been done is being compiled on this website, and essays and articles compiled from these uh, things are going to be presented there. And uh, the history of the academy is trying to be documented as it happens. We're identifying themes, or I guess that was identified at the beginning of when this occurred. Mm -hmm. um, six themes that oh, encompassed the academy were identified, and we're trying to show these to other people. Uh -huh. Cool. So, how's the academy affected your life, and how will it affect your future? It's definitely affected my life. I was, believe it or not, I wouldn't talk to a stranger before I came here. I didn't order for myself at restaurants. I really, yeah, you were that shy. I was shy or introverted or quiet or. I think it had more to do that I was used to when I talked to somebody and um, they they were being like I would talk to someone and say what I meant. I don't usually candy coat things. I say what mm -hmm. I mean. They would not respond well to what I meant. What so I said. So you just shut down. Usually, because. I didn't understand why don't people do the work, why don't they try this, and I always did things way ahead of time, so the only environment at my home school that I felt comfortable was the band room, so <laughs> outside of that room I didn't really talk at all. Wow, so, yeah. so you finally found a place where you feel safe that you can say what you need to say. Yeah, my mom was shocked the first time I ordered at a restaurant. That was probably the first extended after being here I actually ordered at a restaurant and she was really surprised. Wait, this had to be so different for you. I mean, were you were you scared to come here? I was really nervous, yeah. So when did you start really talking? 
I mean, was it the first day, second day, week? Um, I kind of had to to begin with because you don't you come here with no no people that you know, so you have to talk right. to people you don't know if uh -huh. you want to talk to people. And I didn't want to be shut up in my room the entire time. And the wellness programs that they are put on the first couple of weeks are uh -huh. really great for that. Huh? That was a cool story. Yeah. So now you talk, and people you you find other people similar to you, and well, I talk to strangers. Now I always talk, but not really to strangers. Huh. Well, and then, and here you are doing this interview. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe you'll be a broadcaster someday, and you'll be talking in front of millions. I don't think so. You did a good job today. Thanks. Thank you for asking the questions, and thank you for filming. Okay. Are we done? Yep. Yep. Done.